tomorrow. Tonight, you'll step on the court as heroes and off the court as champions. We will control this game. We are going to spread the floor. We got to bang the boards. We got to hit our shots. They're going to bring it inside and let them bring it on. If they want to kick it out for a three, we're forced to dump it inside. You've got to play their guards tight. Let's go man. Let's go two, three zone. Let's press. At every point, push it up the floor. Attack, attack, attack. Slow it down and put a body on it. We must pursue every rebound. Move your feet. They are more physical. They can't battle with us inside. We got to scrap for every board. Drive the lane. Shoot the jump. Do you hear that crowd? Do you hear that crowd? They love you, and then they hate you. We are alone tonight. We are surrounded by millions. Believe in yourself and believe in each other. Tonight is the night. Tonight we are heroes. Tonight we are champions. Welcome to a sold out RCA Dome in Indianapolis, Indiana, home of the 2005 NCAA Women's Final Four. ESPN's exclusive telecast is presented by Avis. It's semifinal number one of the Women's Final Four, where the Baylor Lady Bears are facing the LSU Lady Tigers. We started the season with 324 teams. There are only four left. The winner of the first semifinal between Baylor and LSU will meet the survivor of the second game between Michigan State and Tennessee for the national title. All-Americans will face off in the opener player of the year, Simone Augustus, the Wade Trophy winner, against another Kodak All-American, Sophia Young, averaging almost 22 points a game in the In the history of the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament, dating back to 1982, Baylor coach Kim Mulkey Robertson becomes the first person to participate in a Final Four, first as a player and now as a head basketball coach. And while she said her experience as a player from Louisiana Tech will not help her players make plays on the court tonight, the advantage lies in decision-making away from the floor. For a group experiencing their first Final Four, channeling energies in the right direction, Mike Patrick, could prove pivotal. And Doris, she has had a tremendous run in her fifth year. Here's the lineup for the Baylor Lady Bears. It's Whitaker, Scott, Wabara, Young, and Blackman often overlooked. Sophia Young at 6-1 just elevates over her opponents coming off a 19-11 rebound game against North Carolina, shooting over 55% in the NCAA tournament. The lineup for LSU. Johnson, tremendous ball handler. Hostin, Augustus, the All-American, Jones, and Willis. Tamika Johnson, the 5-3 senior, is all heart and desire, handing out 15 assists against Liberty and knocking down 100% in three-pointers the last three games. Pokey Chapman in her first official year as the LSU head coach. What a way to start. 33-2 and in the final four. Tonight's telecast available in high definition on ESPN HD. And we are underway in Indianapolis. Baylor with the first possession. So much talk about transition. This is a LSU team defensively creates a lot of problems because of their quickness and speed. Chelsea Whitaker is the point guard. Let's see how much penetration she can get. She's not had that good of an NCAA tournament. Follow shot in there by Wabara, partially blocked. And here comes Tamika Johnson running for LSU. The higher seed wearing the home white. Transition defense, obviously a concern for Baylor. Want to set LSU up in their half-court game, but LSU is so good, Mike, at executing, setting picks, and being very patient. Jones, who will not shoot from out there. Only eight on the shot clock. Hostin, who has pretty good range on her jumper, drives and scores the first bucket. Shalonda Hostin really struggled in her last game, but she is coming in looking to score. She's also their three-point shooter. Good attack by Hostin. Oh 
Scott trying to get it inside, and it's tipped out of bounds. Whitaker will inbound. One of the things that LSU worked on in the shoot-around today at practice was not allowing Baylor to get inside off those out-of-bounds passes. Well, they've got to get the ball to Blackman and Young. Oh, they call it was foul so again, Mike. close to a shot clock violation. The foul and the violation came at just about the same time. Tough call. Tilly Willis looked like she had all ball on that, but good turn by Stephanie Blackman to get inside. One of the things that the post for the Lady Bears, they want to get inside, receive that ball, and just go at LSU inside. Blackman is 77% free throw shooter. and balls and we're tied to two 1837 to go first half of play in the sold out rca dome glad you could join us on espn and a poor pass as augustus goes into the lane triple team tried to pass it to a teammate here's how the lady bears got here against number three minnesota their first real test they won by seven then they knocked off a top seed number one north carolina Baylor has felt that long. They are a number one team. They won the Big 12 outright and the Big 12 championship. Blackman tried to force it to Young. Blackman and Young, tremendous combination of scores. Average almost 34 points a game between them. That's why it's going to be important for Baylor to have another player step up offensively from the perimeter for them. Augustus, not a selfish offensive player at all. She's so smooth. Doesn't get the roll on that, and the rebound goes to Sophia Young, who was second in the conference this year, averaging 9.3 in the big spot. Kim Mulkey Robertson talked about before the game, we've got to get rebounds. Nice defensive play by Tamika Johnson, but Baylor's got to stay on the boards and win the boards against LSU. Johnson with a runner draws a foul. The other thing Baylor has to do is stop forcing the ball to Young. They haven't gotten a pass that's gotten really close to her since the game started. A lot of that has to do with the defense that LSU is playing and forcing to try and make different passes. Make other players beat you. Johnson at the free throw line. Well, she's a 73% shooter and misses the first. Tamika Johnson hits the second. Johnson decided to stay at LSU. She could have left last year. She was a partial qualifier, got another year to be able to come back. She decided to, especially after what happened last year against Tennessee in the Final Four. Young gets it to Blackman. This time, Young goes to the high post. And the entry pass to her teammate down low, and she scores and draws a foul. This is where Baylor is so effective at the high-low, and LSU trying to get weak side help. They call the foul on Wendelin Jones as you see the lob, and this is what Duke did against LSU. They were able to pass over the top against LSU and get some easy inside shots. Blackman, the number three all-time scorer, the number six all-time rebounder for this ball club. She has five points, and she is number one in Baylor history in free throws made. She's an excellent shooter, and she has always found a way to get to the line. Augustus forced out with a little bit against the double team. Can't hit it. The rebound goes to Wabar. Just a little pressure that Baylor is putting on LSU at the half court has slowed things down, and LSU does not look comfortable in their offense. Scott for three. Willis with a rebound. Johnson, if she sees an opening, she'll take it like that. 
And at 5'3", she has found a way to get it over the bigger players. Is she fun to watch? I just have said all along she's the best guard in the country because of her experience, her understanding, how to break the defense down. She can't get other players involved, then she will take control. Then the defense has to focus on her. Then things will open up for her teammates. And Andy, as you mentioned, she is such a wonderful story academically. Being a partial qualifier is a tough thing to live with on campus for a young person, man or woman. And because she graduated on time, she got an extra year of eligibility under NCAA rules and came back and took advantage of it. Augustus with a follow off of her own miss after Wobara got a block against the All-American. And Tamika John. And it's Baylor and LSU nodded at five early. And LSU not challenged in this year's tournament until the last round when Duke got within 10. Before that, there's been a cakewalk against Stetson, Arizona, and Liberty. Duke committed a 59-49 game, but LSU ranked number two in one poll, number four in the other back in the final four. I like how Baylor changing up their defenses, going into a 2-3 zone. Kim Mulkey Robertson talked about having to change it up against LSU because she loves playing man-to-man. -man. Nice steal. Hostin tries to penetrate, lost the ball, two-on-one break. Scott thought she was fouled, but they said it's a clean block out of bounds to the Lady Bears. Let's go to Mark Jones. Mark. Yeah, interesting during the last time out. Pokey Chapman smiling while talking to her players, seemingly not concerned about their inefficiency on offense. She said, guys, we're getting decent shots, and we've only reversed the ball once. Defensively, she looked at Tilly Willis, said, be aware, don't keep getting beaten on those flashes to the post. Back to you guys. Thank you, Mark. And Willis has gone to the bench for a rest, and the sensational freshman Sylvia Fowles has come in. You'll love the way she plays. Young forced it up and fouls with a rebound. Sylvia Young is 0 for 2. Baylor 1 for 6 right now. LSU 2 for 6. Johnson's got the 2 basket. Augustus is 0 for 4. Augustus, nice cut across the lane to get open. Got the ball but didn't hit the shot. And it's knocked out of bounds. She had shooting problems the first couple rounds of the NCAA. But stepped up when they got to the regionals. She made some adjustments in her shot. Her father, Seymour, said, look it, you're dropping down and releasing the ball as you're coming down, and also had her put on a bowling glove to help get the ball out of the palm of her hand. Number 51, Neiman into the ball game, and she looks like a post player, but she is an outstanding three-point shooter. Oh, she's an X Factor. In the first game against LSU, she was three or four from three-point range. Blackman double team fouls, got a piece of it. Scott, great pass inside, and Sophia Young finishes. Scott, very quick. Samika Scott coming off a big game of 18 points, nine rebounds against North Carolina. She just really needs to get involved because you said she's so athletic and active, she can create problems. Fouls down inside. Scores easily. When I talked to Kim Mulkey Robertson, she said, Good grief, how do you stop Sylvia Fowles? I don't know. We were so <laughs> impressed by her in the regional. Such an instinctive basketball player. Not just an athlete, she really un understands the game. Blackman gets within 15, short arms a jump shot. And that's rebounded by Wendell and Jones. Pokey Chapman talked about having the post players of Baylor putting the ball on the floor, facing up, and shooting over the defense of LSU. They don't want them to get their backs in the basket and, and get in that close in the lane. Right now, Baylor not getting good looks on offense at all. There's a drive by Jones. Had a great opportunity to score with the left hand and couldn't get it done. Kim Mulkey Robertson said it again in the first game that LSU and Baylor played. It was the very first game for Baylor. They lost by one point to LSU. Had a 21-point lead, the Lady Tigers did, against the Lady Bears. And Baylor came back. They really have a lot of confidence coming into this game, but Kim Mulkey Robertson said we've got to be a lot more aggressive. Scott picked up her dribble and then threw it away. Johnson, nice play. Got it out to Augustus. Out of the corner, the jumper good. 
as Shalonda Hostin, who showed a lot of range in the regional we did, has five points. She was three of five against Liberty from three-point range, had 22, and she needed to get off at low scoring. And you said X-Factor. She was the X-Factor in that game. I had to Augustus. Can't save it. Good awareness by Simone Augustus and Shalonda Huston wide open. Neiman not able to get out there quick enough. And that's kind of the break situation. They don't always have to score a layup, which they want to get points in the paint, whether it be off layup or off their post players or dribble drives. But if they can get those outside shots, LSU will take them. Again, penetration results in the turnover. That is the fourth. Latoya Wyatt, number 12 in the ball game, got a hand on that one and knocked it out of bounds. Wyatt only a sophomore at 5'7", a transfer from McLennan Community College. And Kim Mulkey Robertson likes her athleticism, her speed. Hopefully it stay with somebody like Tamika Johnson, but they switched up with Whitaker on it. Fouls, nice move to get open, draws a foul. The other X factor in that first game is Wabara, who didn't get a lot of playing time against LSU, and Sylvia Fowles. Sylvia Fowles has improved so much over the course of the year. She's a lot more poised coming off the bench. She doesn't have a lot of pressure on her, and she knows what her role is when she comes into the game. Made the all SEC freshman team, was the uh, sixth man of the year in the conference. You just look at her play, and you'd say, gee, she would start for how many teams in the country? Virtually the, all? Well, and that's what Pokey Chapman and her coaching staff has said. Look, at, we know that Tilly Willis and Wendelin Jones know their role. They set screens within the offense. That's not what Sylvia Fowles' role is. When she comes off the bench, obviously it's more for defense and posting up rather than setting the screens. Young, fadeaway jump shot. Fowles was right in her face, and she missed everything. Whitaker with those ballers. Neiman showing that range a little too strong. And here comes Tamika Johnson on the run. She was hitting those shots as she went out today. Johnson short with her jumper and Whitaker with a rebound. A little nerves? I think so. Both teams a little tight. Neiman tries the entry pass and a reach in foul will be on fouls. Got a timeout, 11.38 to go first half. LSU with a lead over Baylor. It's almost like we're not at the Final Four this year because Connecticut isn't here. Look at that. They won the last three. Notre Dame in 2001, UConn before that. Tennessee had a run of three in a row, 96, 97, and 98. Purdue and Notre Dame have been really good clubs that entire span. And as we mentioned, Mike, in the opening, as much as Tennessee and Connecticut have dominated in the last 10 years, I really see a changing of the tide with other teams really getting involved and not in yep. as intimidated. Good recruits going to different schools wanting to be a part of something else rather than Tennessee and Connecticut. And overall, that's got to be good for the game. Let's check in with Doris Burke. Doris. Mike, Kim Mulkey Robertson looked at Sophia Young and Stephanie Blackman and said, you cannot allow them to change what you do. You need to keep attacking with your bodies inside. Look for them to try to isolate Sophia Young at the elbow, maybe take Sylvia Fowles away from the rim, guys. And Doris, it certainly hasn't been working trying to get her ball down low. Now, the official's in play, so that ball is in play. Coming out of that timeout, Baylor shooting 17%. Yikes. And in the NCAA tournament for LSU, they're holding their opponents to 29%, but 36% for LSU. They're not shooting the ball any better. The lead is four for the Lady Tigers. Whitaker hasn't been able to penetrate. She'll take a jump shot. And fouls as she gets her hands on it. It's over. I like how Whitaker is shading Tamika Johnson so she doesn't get the ball so quick off a defensive rebound for LSU on the outlet. Austin isolated one-on-one -on -one against Whitaker, and she'll draw the foul. Or check it against Wyatt, and she gets the personal on Wyatt, her first. Tonight, ESPN's exclusive coverage of the NCAA Women's Championship telecast. 
presented by Avis continues our second final four game. Michigan State takes on Shira Eli and the Tennessee Lady Vols at nine. And Tuesday is the national championship game from here in the RCA Dome in Indianapolis. Johnson left wide open, and you can't do that. She's too good a shooter. Nearly 50%. She doesn't take that many, but when she takes them, she makes them. She's made her last three six three-pointers in this tournament. And if you go out on her, she's got all that quickness to get by you. Augustus with a rebound off Young's miss. And that's exactly the kind of shot that LSU wants to give up to Baylor. Fouls, nice entry pass. Missed a shot. And Fouls goes down. She's still there. I'm going to play five on four. And great hustle by Jones. And there is Fouls, who just rejoined the parade and got in on the floor to get the ball. Johnson to Augustus. The runner's good and a foul. What a sequence for LSU. Watch out. Off the assist. That is where Simone Augustus gets her game going when Tamika Johnson can give her a little easy dish off a break situation. The shot by Baylor doesn't go in. They deflect it. LSU comes up with the loose ball, and you see Simone Augustus getting an easy basket. She was struggling early on in this first half, getting any kind of shot to fall down for her, but that breaks the ice. LSU not a good free throw shooting team, but Augustus is brilliant. Number one in the conference, top 12 in the NCAA. LSU has the size inside. They want to continue to try and force Baylor to shoot over the top. Baylor has gone scoreless for four and a half minutes. They've fallen behind by 10. Young forced it. One and done. And here comes Tamika Johnson. Ahead on the run out. Missed. Austin had the look with the left hand and got too deep. How difficult is it for Sophia Young to get a good look at the basket with Sylvia Files on her? Right now, it looks impossible. It's 6-5. It's tough. Wendelin Jones getting called for a foul down low. But, you know, defensively, talking about LSU also, Mike, right now, Shalonda Hobson doing a terrific job on Shamika Scott. Scott coming off a game of 18 points, 9 rebounds, and Scott's totally been taken out of the game. 13%. And it's been outstanding defense. They have put tremendous pressure on the Lady Bears. Willis got a piece of the entry pass, but Baylor gets the basket from Wubara on the lay-in, and it's 17-9. Baylor needed that desperately. Kofi Chapman said before the game that Wubara was the kind of player that really worries her because she is real physical. Fouls loose underneath as Blackman turned her head and kept the turn for a couple of seconds, and the pass just went right over the top. They are the only team that I've seen this year, LSU, where they show, throw the lob pass, Mike, and you see players that go up there and stay up there and put it in rather than come down with it. You don't see that in the women's game too often. Young comes outside to 15 feet, can't hit the shot. Augustus with a rebound. That's four for the All-Americans. And this is where LSU can continue to push the ball. They get defensive rebounds, and they put pressure on you against the defense. Tough entry pass to Hostin. Scott with a block. It's out of bounds off of Baylor. 8.13 to go. First half, and LSU has exploded to a 10-point lead over the Lady Bears of Baylor, who can't get there. Inside power game untracked, and Angela Tisdale, number 20, a 5'5 freshman, comes in for Baylor. A lot of it has to do with the patience that LSU has had on the defensive end, forcing Baylor to take those outside shots and not really going for a lot of steals and making them shoot over the top. Augustus. Pull up jumper, so sweet. So pretty. She has five in the leads a dozen. I tell you what, this is this is no cut on any other LSU player. But when Sylvia Fowles is in there, they're virtually unbeatable. And the defense again. 
Johnson, remarkable to hold on to it. Gets it out to Hostin for three. Baylor has to get the timeout. They're down by 15 points. Tamika Johnson, it was like she had a string on the ball. Everybody was swiping at it. Somehow she maintained control and got it back into Hostin. She was sliding into second. <laughs> she was. Look at this play by Simone Augustus, her favorite player, Julia Surian. But you know what? She looks a lot like Jamal Wilk, smooth as silk. But look at that pass underneath. You see Johnson, the ball eventually ends up in the hands of Hawson, knocking down her second three-pointer. And now it just seems to be like an avalanche. And Baylor is being buried under its own mistakes with 740 to go in the first half, down by 15. Simone Augustus with that slow start. She had the same kind of thing, if I recall, against Duke. And by the end of the game, you take a look, she's over 20 easily again. And Baylor gets a needed bucket from Stephanie Blackman, the senior from Dallas, who averages over 15 a game, and it's 24-11. And she has seven of Baylor's 11 points. Augustus around the screen, wide open, doesn't hit it. Here comes Scott on the run for the Lady Bears. Tisdale. Trying to get by Johnson. Johnson right in her face, takes the ball away. And Pokey Chapman, very animated, sprinting up and down that sideline. And going right by the official as she does it. She's got to be careful. And now with six points and two assists in the game, she says that that incident almost a year ago to the day helped make her a better leader for this LSU Lady Tiger team. She told me that she took all of two days off after that game, got right back into the gym, and subsequently has earned the respect of each and every one of her teammates. And don't think for a minute, guys, that she's not further motivated by the fact that she was passed over for a lot of the All-American teams. Back to you. Mark, she sure didn't hide from it. She uh, took the responsibility for that mistake. Young, nice move. First time she gets five fouls to score. And a good play coming out of the timeout. Very nice up and under by Sophia Young. And to get back to Tamika Johnson, she ran the mile almost under six minutes because she wanted to train and get her conditioning. So well, she's at five games. She's at 40-minute games. She just never lets up. Willis is back in, tries to get the fouls, knocked away, stolen by Young. And here comes Tisdale, who will operate the point. Had eight assists in four games in the NCAA tournament coming into Indianapolis. Young, left alone, his fouls. Didn't really seem comfortable going out to 20 feet defensively. And Young has hit two buckets in a row. She has half a dozen, the lead's down to nine. She missed those earlier. She looks a lot more comfortable. Plus, LSU is sagging off her a little bit because she missed those. Now there's a little bit more confidence in her. Augustus matched with Young. Young won't let her throw. Augustus tries to force it. Loose ball, Willis got it. Now fouls, shot clock at five. Hostin unloads. And the rebound to Blackman. A little more intensity for Baylor right now. And LSU's not running their motion offense quite as sharp as they have early on. Wide open, Tisdale. And it's out of bounds to LSU. Let's check in with Doris. Mike Kim Oaks, Mulkey Robertson just told her team, listen, we cannot get this back in one or two possession. Let's keep defending hard, rebounding, get some stops. She also looked at Shamika Scott, who was complaining about her inability to get the ball into the post. She said, listen, you can't wait, you can't ball fake on the catch, immediately look to hit the post. Guys, they've been ineffective thus far, but Sophia Young starting to percolate. And they need her badly. She was not happy with Kinsdale's shot on that. Great drive. Fouls tries to follow the miss by Johnson. It's the second time she's gotten in a point blank range and couldn't hit the shot. Neiman's back in there, that good long range shooter. 
The foul's just laying in the wake that time for Sophia Young. Austin gives it up to her 5-3 senior teammate. That's where LSU, Mike, can be so effective on the defensive end. They don't go for a lot of ball fakes. They stay on the ground and fouls because of her height. You can see she jumps of hesitation, and she can block those shots afterwards. Johnson tries the lob, short on it, picked off by Baylor. Normally in the past, they've been able to lob with a 31-inch vertical by Young. She can get those. Scott got it. Three-pointer. Nice run by Baylor. They cut the lead to six. Nine unanswered points for the Lady Bears. Well, that's a great sign for Baylor. I mean, they were really being ripped by LSU, and they come back steaming. A lot of it has to do with the belief in themselves. They know they can come back against this LSU team. They did it in the very first game of the season for the Lady Bears. And there you see Shamika Scott, who's been pretty hot coming into this game, finally gets a good shot to fall for her. Scott, one of those up and down shooters, either been feast or famine for her. There's no question that for Kim Mulkey Robertson, her team looks to go inside, looks to go to the post players and get scoring. But if they can rely on the perimeter players and get a little bit of gravy there, it'll open things up. LSU with only a one turnover advantage, but a half a dozen point advantage on scoring off of those miscues. Baylor's got to feel pretty good about the score right now, not only with that comeback, but you know, with LSU and holding them the kind of shooting percentage they are. Johnson, good skip pass to get Augustus open, and she buries the shot, had a foot inside the line. But it's 26-18, and the Wade Trophy winner has seven here in the first half. A lot of people will question Simone Augustus whether she has the ability to shoot from the outside that far. Folks, she does. She's got enough, doesn't she? She doesn't need it all the time. She gets great spacing from her teammates off the screens. Neiman couldn't handle a pass. The seventh turnover for Kim Mulkey Robertson's club. Back in Indianapolis, where women's basketball is taking center stage. 26-18 LSU over Baylor and Myers. Over 60% of the points for Baylor come inside. So they're looking to get the ball inside. And you can see the cut going down low. But watch Tamika Johnson. She is sagging off. And you'll see Chelsea Whitaker kind of flow it out. She is wide open. So for Baylor, they've got to look for the outside pass. And there you see Tamika Johnson will sag in again instead of the cross pass to Whitaker again, wide open on the weak side. Baylor continues to throw the ball to LSU inside. 325 to go first half. Johnson into the lane, got the roll. She is just fearless at 5-3. She's 3 of 5 from the floor, looking to go inside. You know she can hit the outside shot, but they're trying to defend against that, and Sophia Young continues her hot hand from outside. Young showing her range in the NCAA. She's averaging almost 23 points and 8 rebounds a game. And she is really keeping the Lady Bears in this game. And shooting over 55% from the floor. Augustus misses one out of the corner. Whitaker back the other way. The left-hander in the lane. Kicks it to the corner. Young really feeling it, but instead comes outside to Whitaker again. Tamika Johnson drives baseline, has a quick step. Talk to Kim Mulkey Robertson. I said, who does she remind you of? She said, she reminds me of me. She's a little gentle. And I tell you, Kim Mulkey Robertson had a quick step. She was very difficult to stop going to the lane and also could shoot the outside shot. Neiman with tremendous rain penetrates on this one. Young with 17 on the shot clock will take it herself. Loose ball and Baylor with a fresh shot clock. That will help Baylor, Mike, if they can continue to hit the boards. Obviously, they'd like to hit a better percentage on shots. Good defense that time by Fowles. She stepped around the offensive player and got a piece of it and then goes to the floor for a tie-up. Possession error will give it to LSU. 
You know, this is game, watching it, there's a lot of respect among the players. There's no dirty stuff going on, and, and that was a perfect play that the players going for the ball, there was nothing, you know, just really, it was physical, but you love the passion that both teams have. Great to see, isn't it? Yes. Bailey switching back into that zone. Now it's a 3-2. Couple of zone busters on this club. Johnson is one, Hostin is another. Shot clock at eight. Williams tried the touch pass to Fowles. Didn't get it there. It's Whitaker trying to set up the screen for Neiman. There's that three-point shot. She's got the touch. Neiman given any kind of an opening. A 46% bomber from long range. Well, that's just it. it. This has been a first half of spurts. LSU got on a run, and then all of a sudden, Baylor has got a lot of confidence, and now starting to hit some outside shots. 28-23 as we approach the one-minute mark. Augustus too strong for fouls. Going into that zone, Neiman, big arms, making it large outside, and LSU trying to beat him on the baseline going inside. Two bad passes. It's funny to see Neiman, a post-sized defender, on one side, a three-point shooter on the other. Now a driver hits the layup and the foul. Emily, Emily Newman out of Houston, Texas, Westbury Christian, played post all through high school. But she is such a good outside shooter, and Kim Mulkey Robertson will use her. And you can see her going inside the lane, has the ability to put the ball on the floor. But Mulkey Robertson likes her ability to be able to go inside and outside. And she has created problems right now for LSU because of her size, not just on the offensive end, but the defensive end. Exactly. 17 4 Baylor run. Augustus will try a three pointer. One and done for LSU. And LSU not being able to go inside, whether it be with their passes to the post or with the dribble penetration. They made two core passes and really not a high percentage shot for Simone Augustus. LSU led by as many as 15. Baylor can tie it or take the lead with the final possession. What a comeback by the Lady Bears. Whitaker. Now that takes some guts, Ann. <laughs> you gotta love how they came back, and it was a defense that... Woeful shooting the ball at the start, came back to get within three percentage points of LSU. Neither team has taken many opportunities from outside the arc, you might expect, in a 28-28 game. Simone Augustus was held 27% in that first half, 3 of 11. We mentioned in the NCAA, the first two games against Stinson in Arizona, she shot 30% for those two games. And Baylor starts the second half the way they did the first with a bad pass and the turnover. Let's go to Mark Jones. Well, LSU with the ball right now, guys, on offense. I spoke with Pokey Chapman a few moments ago. She says that offensively, they're settling for too many long jump shots, had too many hollow possessions. They want to make Baylor guard them a little bit more. Defensively, she said that the eight points for Sophia Young represents too much Baylor momentum. That's the dangerous part. They want to get out and contest her more here in the second half. Now let's go to Dora. Well, Mark, you just touched on it. Look for Baylor to play a lot of 3-2 zone because they want to see LSU continue to shoot those jumpers you just talked about. As far as Simone Augustus, they said, listen, she's a great player. Don't worry about that. Just can keep contesting shots, Mike. Wendell Jones tried to save that one, Doris, and it's off the hands of Tamika Johnson. And LSU has certainly not been a great outside shooting team, only 34% the entire season. Young, nice move to get free against Willis and buries the jump shot. And look at this. Baylor has taken the lead at 30 to 28. For LSU against his zone, they have to keep moving and pass the ball. They also, look at that high post area. They got to sneak it behind there and the baselines will be open. But they're kind of standing around. Got to get some ball movement. Not only that, but also people cutting. Wendland Jones, baseline jumper, just nicked the rim. Johnson. 
can't hit it. Try thirty on the shot clock because of Kelly Willis and the long rebound. Baylor only got out rebounded four times this year. Only one loss. That was against LSU. See if Johnson can penetrate it all against the zone. Instead of skip pass to Augustus. And from the baseline, Simone Augustus knocks it down. She has not. Blackman who comes to the high post. Neiman. Oh, what an advantage if Neiman can go outside and hit 22 footers and then go inside and score on a post move. That was so easy. They went down and screened for Neiman, and the defense for LSU was just standing. Good save by Hostin. The pass never got away from him. There's that inside at the high post. Augustus on a good feed from Johnson. Well, it's been the Simone Augustus show offensively. And this game is now tied for the sixth time. I tell you, Baylor's really got to like this tempo. They have slowed things down, forcing LSU into half court game, which LSU likes a half court game, but they want to push it up a little bit more and make it quicker in that zone and stopping that. Blackman really forced that Jones with a rebound. Wendelin Jones is such an unsung hero as Tilly Willis is because of the kind of defense they can play against their opponents. Well, Johnson didn't see anything. Brought it back outside against some tough defense. She's got that range good no-look pass. Augustus short on the jumper. She really does not look sharp on her shot. She's falling away. She needs to go in. And also really maybe not as good a shot. I think it's rushed within the offense. Tamika Johnson just settling back against Whitaker. Number two all-time in assists for Baylor is Whitaker in and out. Tough shot there. Offensive rebound to Young, who is pumped up. Got the bucket and drew the foul. <laughs> Sophia Young, who's only got five years of basketball under her belt, coming from the West Indies. And Kim Mulkey Robertson knows she had an athlete when she, when she got a chance to see her play. Only a junior, she is already the number seven all-time scorer, the number five all-time rebounder, number two in steals. She's just done everything, and Baylor has a three-point lead. 13 points for Sophia Young, who's averaged nearly 22 in the NCAA tournament. Got to find some offense beside Simone Augustus. And she forces it into traffic. And it looked like Wilbara got her in the arm. That will be two on Abby Wilbara. This game's been well officiated. Dee Cantner, Tina Napier, Barb Smith. And they've done a good job so far in this one. You and I had talked before the game about zone defenses and that how do you break them with your offense. A lot of the same applies as far as a man-to-man. -man principles sure. LSU is not applying that they're doing a lot of standing around they're not setting their screens and you can do that on the zone and a find the openings Augustus with a rare miss she is number one all time for her career at LSU it's one out of two on that trip 35 33 the Lady Tigers back to within two and Neiman will come back in the ball game and give Jubara a breather LSU had three players go 20 minutes in that first half. Sophia Young was the only one for Baylor. So Kim Mulkey Robertson has relied on her bench, given some players some rest. Much more confident ball handling for Baylor since they were down by 15 points. Young against Jones. Tough defense. Young can't hit it. Fight for the rebound. Here comes LSU. Austin. Boy, and Baylor's done a nice job getting back. Augustus forced it up from the lane and scores again. Simone Augustus has 14. We're tied at 35. It's like a big paw just put in the basket. Three lead changes. Now seven ties in this hard fought game. And that's unusual for a game where one team has had a 15 point lead. That was LSU midway through the first half. Whitaker trying to get the entry pass to the low post and threw it away. 
Welcome back to Indianapolis. We are locked up at 35, and it was just one week ago, just hours before a regional semifinal game last week in Tempe, Arizona. Baylor player Sophia Young, a emotional reunion with her mom who came all the way from the West Indies. Sophia left home at 15, became an exchange student in Louisiana, had not seen her mom in quite some time, guys. She was able to see her play, went on to have 26 points, seven boards en route to an MVP, and leading Baylor to a Final Four. Her mom couldn't be happier, guys. Well, that's neat, and that she has the opportunity to be here and see her play again. She went to Evangel Academy in Shreveport and called Kim Mulkey. Nobody knew about it. Kim Mulkey hadn't seen her play. He hadn't heard about it because she is from the West Indies. And Jennifer Roberts on the bench, the assistant, her dad, Bo, saw her play and said, you better get out here and get her. <laughs> Augustus with a miss. Good rebound by Scott. Baylor with a chance to regain the lead. Scott, good entry pass to Blackman. On the low blocks, can't hit the shot, though. And fouls back in, clears for LSU. They've done a good job of picking up Tamika Johnson. She hasn't been able to hurt them on the fast breaks and very early in the game. And that pass thrown away, but they get it right back. Augustus missed the shot, fouls with the tip, fouls again. Draws the personal. You said it, Mike, the transition defense by Baylor has really kind of stifled LSU. They want to push the ball, but defensively, and this is what Duke did to LSU in the first half, but LSU was able to adjust because what they did, they got rebounds, and they were able to push it and also force Duke to miss a lot of shots. And when you miss shots and then can get rebounds, you're going to run. Baylor's making shots in the second half. Fouls, one of the weaknesses in her game as a freshman. She is less than 60% from the free throw line. But she makes that one to give LSU a one point lead at the 1407 mark. Here's a kid who ran five miles three, four days in Miami when she was home this offseason. Well, she just looks like she has an unlimited future. And she did that in the beach. Mm. Bodies flying inside as Blackman goes down, and the foul will be against LSU. Augustus called for pushing. That's one on the All-American. Having trouble inbounding. Neiman wants the ball right back, gets it in good position. And Neiman, who had been shooting poorly in the NCAA, has shown you her entire game in this one. Jump hooks, 22-foot bombs, you name it, she put it in. Mulkey Robertson said that was her best move, is that hook shot. Well, she has 10 points. Comes from a very athletic family. Her older brother, Jeffrey, was a pitcher for Rice had a perfect season, 17-0 in their national championship run and was the fourth overall draft by Major League Baseball. Well, Emily Ambridge, 24 points and 12 rebounds in high school. She averaged only six points a game in the NCAA. She already has 10 tonight. Whitaker, poor pass. Augustus on the run out. Can't hit it. And Fowles is there to follow. Fowles with nine. Well, that was huge because Baylor did a super job getting back. And Augustus in this game struggling to get shots down. That's where she's got to adjust her game and do something else like play good defense and rebound. And there's not much answer for a 6'5 athlete who can run with everybody on the court. One of the things that the LSU coaches have talked about, that teams will key in on Simone Augustus, and the best way you can make her a better player, she's got to get her teammates involved. Neiman to inbound, does so to Scott. Scott almost lost it twice. Neiman guarded by Augustus. Young, very smooth, but missed that one badly. Johnson on the run. Still looking for an opening. Can't find one. 
Should take the shot herself inside the three-point line and knock it down. That's double figures for Tamika Johnson and LSU with a four-point advantage. Scott. Fouls had it taken away. One and thing, Young scores. One thing Fowles is going to have to do is get stronger hands. As big as she is, her hands aren't quite strong enough sometimes to hold on to the ball. 12-15 to go in the first national semifinal. Coaching job ever by Pat Summit. A lot of people think it was. She has an injury-riddled ball club, and she has them standing by as a top seed to face another top seed, Michigan State in our second national semifinal for the right to play for a championship on Tuesday night. LSU up by two over Baylor here. 12 8 and counting in Indianapolis. Hoskin to Young. Double team missed. And Neiman with a loose ball. Gets it to Young. One thing Sylvia fouls when she gets it inside, she's going to get banged. She's going to have to finish those shots inside no matter how many people are on her. Remember, she's only a freshman. That's the hard part to remember. Neiman, nice pass. Young, nice defense by fouls. Sylvia fouls is just so impressive when she goes up for a rebound. Nine already in this game. Augustus. The shooting's been off in the second half. Simone Augustus in the game, six of 19, under 33%. Blackman a walk. The battle of the All-Americans, Sophia Young and Simone Augustus right now the advantage to LSU by a bucket. 11.07 to go, LSU with a two-point lead, Ann Myers. Baylor's defense, that 3-2 zone has created some problems for LSU in their half-court game. They're trying to find gaps, and Simone Augustus did get into the middle of the lane. Nice Pa wraparound pass by Johnson, but it's the only time that they've been able to feed it in there with Emily Neiman at 6-1. Her size has been tough to see over. Now you see Baylor picking up half court, putting some pressure on the ball. I'm really surprised that Tamika Johnson hasn't gotten more penetration off the dribble against that zone. There like you go. that. <laughs> Must have hurt. Attack me. the gaps. Little ball fake. Gets Baylor up on the air in, in the air defensive end. Johnson takes advantage of it. Young got it in the foul. And there's another little head fake right there by Sophia Young. Sylvia Fowles doesn't have to leave the ground, but what she did, she lifted her shoulders and her hips rose, which put her off balance. Watch the little move by Sophia Young up high. You see how Fowles stood up, and as soon as she stood up, Young recognized that she was off balance and attack. Just a smart play by a very talented player. The lead is two. Augustus. Well, it was a nice entry pass by Wendland Jones. And 16 for Simone Augustus. LSU, if they can hit the gaps, also get the ball on the baseline and then cut from weak side, they'll get more opportunities like that. Scott has been very quiet in the second half. Poor pass by Blackman trying to hit her veteran co-post player. And Johnson getting some space down low, bucket and a foul. 
And that's what Mike, we talked about in the first half, that Tamika Johnson was cheating so much off of Whitaker. We don't see the steal, but we see the good penetration, and she finishes shots. What Johnson does when she drives, she'll either finish the shot or she'll create a foul. But on the defensive end, we talked in the first half that Baylor wanted to get the ball inside. Sometimes they get too locked into that instead of ball faking and then going to the week to where Whitaker is wide open. Johnson just continues to amaze people. She gives up a foot to most defenders and goes in there. They still can't block her shot. She's right, you can join us from Indianapolis. The lead is down grown to six in the first of two national semifinal games for the right to play for a national championship. Baylor in the dark uniforms gets a rare bucket from Wilbara to cut it to two against LSU playing in the home whites. We mentioned that was the S factor with Rabara coming into the game. If she gets hot, LSU's going to have trouble. Whitaker was left wide open, didn't want the shot. Not a good play by LSU, forcing the action. Young, open from 16, bricked it. Johnson yelling at Augustus, come on, let's run. And Johnson just sort of threw that one up toward the backboard. Here's a double team and a reach-in foul. And Johnson saying, hey, that's my fault. The foul that LSU picked up was the fault of Johnson. She wanted to run it, didn't have the numbers. She knows that she made the mistake. She's an extension of Pokey Chapman. Her head coach is meant that Kim Mokey Robinson, when she was at Louisiana Tech, recruited both Tamika Johnson and Pokey Chapman. And they wanted to play for Sue Gunner who I'm sure is watching this game in the hospital tonight, recovering from pneumonia. Oh, nice cut and a nice pass. Neiman scores on the dish from Wubara. Well run play, and it's back to a two-point game. Neiman is so good, Mike, at using her screens. You don't have to be super fast to cut off screens. Just know how to set them up. Neiman, 12 off the bench. She had struggled in the NCAA tournament, but not tonight. Fouls is clobbered by Young. Emily Neiman, weak side. You see the screen and watch her curl, and then Simone Augustus just gets caught hanging. She's out to dry on that one defensively. Augustus. Hangs and buries the jump shot. She has 18 points, and it's always quiet points for Augustus. As good as her jump shot is, she doesn't do the spectacular things. When you look at the stat sheet at the end of the game, she's got 22, 24 points. That's pretty good. Wabara with a runner. They don't look to Wabara to score any more than five points a game, but that's huge. And she'll have a free throw to cut into a two-point lead. Seven minutes, 58 seconds to go, and a good one. LSU by a pair over Baylor. The Lady Tigers led by as many as 15 in the first half, but Baylor fought back to catch them at the half. It's been close ever since. Well, we said it was going to be a battle of the All-Americans, and they certainly haven't disappointed. Sophia Young, 17 points, eight rebounds, a career-high six assists. And Simone Augustus, 18 points, five rebounds, and two assists. Wabara, who lives in Parma, Italy, of Nigerian defense, com uh, or of Nigerian ancestry, completes the three-point play, cuts the lead to one. Talked to her before the game. She said, you know, I grew up in Italy, and I played with Cynthia Cooper. Cynthia Cooper was a great influence on her. Great player out of USC and with the Houston Comets. Tilly Willis from the baseline can't hit it. And here comes Chelsea Whitaker. She's got good entry pass to Young, but she had a defender on her back and kicked it back outside. 
Let's check in with Mark Jones. Mark, what do you have? Well, guys, during the last time out, Pokey Chapman telling her team, imploring her team, think the game. Be smart. Be methodical. Be patient. That's what we do. That's why we win. The offense, the focus of her attention during that last huddle, guys. All right, thanks, Mark. And this is Scott. Fadeaway jumper. Big basket from Shamika Scott. One of those street shooters. If she gets hot, look out. And Baylor is up by one. Out of the corner, Hostet, no. And the follow shot as bodies fly. From fouls. Nice curl by Scott. We said that she hadn't done much in the second half, but she can explode on you. LSU only 12 games have shot under 60 points. And they are 2 and 10. Their last game, they beat Duke 59 49. But their low this year, they scored 49 points against Rutgers and lost by two. Fouls, who's a poor free throw shooter, sit three straight. And they're pretty good doing it. The freshman from. She has 11 points off the bench. Doesn't start, but gets the majority of the minutes in the pivot. Young hasn't looked for her outside shot in a while. Rabara on the drive, had it rejected. Wanted the foul, doesn't get it. I thought Kim Mulkey Robinson was going to take a charge by the ref. <laughs> Augustus from the baseline behind the screen rims out. LSU quickly back on defense. Whitaker, and she's hacked by Tamika Johnson as she goes into the lane. That'll be two on the senior from New Orleans. You can get the complete results from the Women's Basketball Championship as well as information on future championship sites. All of that on NCAAsports.com. NCAAsports.com, the official online, online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Now, if you're at home, name them. <laughs> Go. <laughs> yeah. Get back to us when you're done. Whitaker at the free throw line. She can give Baylor the lead and does. Six fifteen to go. Fans coming to their feet, really getting in it, into it. And the Tennessee and Michigan State followers have picked out the teams they want to root for by now. Hostin lost it on the way in. That was just good defense by Emily Neiman, who's been playing high in that three-two. She dropped. Down into the middle, Shalonda Hassan. I like the fact that she attacked the gap, but right. probably a little bit out of control. But Neiman just stood her ground. Neiman's done a tremendous job off the bench, both ends of the court. Whitaker left wide open, can't hit it. Nice rebound by Fowles. Eleven boards for the freshman. They had Wendell and Jones right there at the high post, and she came up to the top of the key. Johnson behind the screen, too strong. I still think they've got to go inside, get a little closer. Whitaker, and Fowles comes down, bangs into Whitaker, and the Baylor bench is beside itself. They wanted a foul that time as Fowles just smoked little Samika Johnson. You said they let him play. And Samika Johnson's got to be thinking, what hit me? I don't know why Tamika Johnson continues to try to throw inside against Sophia Young. It hasn't worked. She has snatched every woman out of there. And then you have to admire how Young goes in. She wants that ball. She is posting up fouls. All of a sudden, Abiola Wobara has decided she's going to put a lot of this on her back. Abby Wabara, a six-foot sophomore, doesn't know whether she's left-handed or right-handed. 
She is right-handed, but she does a lot of things left-handed. Off that drive, Jones picks up another foul. Wabara, a sophomore, she's 23 years old. Is it a good sign if you don't know if you're left-handed or right-handed? <laughs> For Wabara, it is. <laughs> 440 to go in the game. Baylor by four. Now the pressure's on LSU as they face their biggest deficit of the ball game. And Simone Augustus fouled on the way in. And let's see with 433, Mike, whether Simone Augustus, the way State Farm Wade Trophy Award winner, can step up her game. She told Mark Jones before the game, she goes, I've got to play like player of the year. It was a non-shooting foul. She has 18 points. Good pass to Jones, and then Jones with a bullet pass from about six feet away. There is no way Fowles is going to catch that one. And a timeout. The Baylor fans are loving this with 4.28 to go. They've got a four-point lead trying to qualify for a national championship game. Bill's got this four-point lead. Sylvia Fowles has helped keep the Lady Tigers in this game off the bench. She was an impact on the defensive end, not only blocking shots, getting rebounds, forcing bad shots by the Baylor Lady Bears. But she is going to have to come through inside down the stretch here, we talked about Simone Augustus, but Sylvia Fowles, she's only three for six. She's taken six shots. We see the 12 rebounds, but you gotta get those putbacks and get them down. She is the most athletic, the most naturally gifted 6'5 player I have seen in women's basketball. She dunks all the time in warm-ups. Well, she is just so smooth. I think what she's going to be like as a senior. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Whitaker picked up. Neiman, now Young. 15-footer, got it. Kim Young with 19. Mikey Robertson talked about, and there you see. Mom That's thinks fine. it's this easy all the time. But you can see the composure. Baylor has settled down. Augustus, line drive jumper out of the corner. One and done for LSU. LSU is pressing. That was a tight shot. They're right. LSU is the veteran team. Neiman, that would have been a three. She thought she got hit on the arm. Johnson, what a spin, then she lost the ball. Great move by Johnson, then she couldn't hold on. Timeout on the court, only 3.39 left. Pat Summit making her way into the RCA Dome as her Lady Vols will face Michigan State. Coming up next, about a half an hour when we're done with this. It is 57-51. Baylor, let's check in with Doris Burke. Doris. Mike Kim Rope, Mulkey Robertson just told her team, listen, no turnovers. Let's get a shot on every single possession. Anticipate some long jumpers for LSU. That means long rebounders. And guys, she also said anticipate the press. If they don't come with the press, they're going to look to trap. Be careful with the basketball. And Doris's school has come so far so fast. Last year, their first ever Sweet 16. The controversial loss to Tennessee this year, the first ever Final Four, and they're three and a half minutes away from their first ever national championship game. Scott against the triple team, draws a foul. Baylor attacking, going right at LSU, getting them in foul trouble. They've been aggressive. One of the things that Kim Mulkey Robertson talked about, the coach for Baylor, that we've got to be aggressive. In that first game that they played against LASU, they felt that the Lady Tigers were more aggressive than they were. They wanted to come out in this game. It's been spurts, but down the stretch, this is when it's counting. And I think a huge factor, too, Mike, is that they have stayed on the rebounds with LSU. That's been huge. Baylor's been a lousy free throw shooting team, 69%. Tonight, they've hit 11 out of 12. That's been the difference. Knocked away, recovered by Johnson. Fouls into a double team. Scores! 
big shot by Fowles. And she has a double-double now with 13 points, 11 boards. And will LSU put some perimeter pressure on Baylor? Right now, it doesn't look like it. The clock has really become the Lady Bears' friend. Neiman, good catch. Shot clock at 10 for Whitaker. And Whitaker wide open for three, almost forced to take it. Good play by Wubara to tip it out. She knew she couldn't get the rebound, and here is a hold on Wendland Jones. And that may be five on Jones. And she's gone. One of their best defenders fouls out with 2.29 left. She never really got into the flow of the game. She picked up two quick fouls, and real frustrating fouls for her. She was not happy with, I don't think, any of the fouls that occurred for her. You're right, she has been one of their best defensive players along with Tilly Willis down low and not a way that Jones would like to enter her career at LSU. Danny, this has been really odd because LSU has only had three players score in the second half. They've only had four players score in the entire game. Jones, only a junior, going to the bench. And Florence Williams, a senior at 6'1", coming in. Rubara goes to the line. She made the all-regional team in Tempe. Knocks this one down. 12 out of 13 from the free throw line. She is a 55% free throw shooter. She's just hit three in a row from the strike. Make it four. And that's been a difference. Baylor has hit their free throws. LSU is 8 of 12 from the line. Just missing those four free throws by LSU really took the wind out of it. And Mubara has 10 points in the second half. Biggest lead of the game. Baylor up by 8, 61 53. Reach in. Uh, Chelsea Whitaker called for kicking the ball, and they're going to fresh 30. Johnson really telegraphing that pass at the high post. LSU really needs to hurry. Jump shot. Beautiful. The All-American Simone Augustus now has 20, and it's a six-point game. Two-minute mark. I don't think LSU can afford to just sit back and play a half-court game defensively. Got to put a little bit more pressure on Baylor bringing the ball off the floor. And Baylor still has to run its offense. Neiman looks inside. Young forced it up against Fowles. Fowles thought she had all ball. Instead, she'll be called for the foul, and Pokey Chapman doesn't like it one bit. At shoot around today, Mulkey Robinson was emphatical telling Young, go at Fowles. I don't care how many times she blocks your shot. Get it and go back, go back, go back. And there's the result. Well, whether she got all ball or not, the reason she's called for that foul is because she extended her arms forward instead of having them straight up, and then gives the referee the opportunity to make that foul call on you. Young at the line, hits them both. 63 to 55, Baylor showing no signs of cracking. Baylor's been the hottest team coming in here, won 18 in a row. Too much perimeter passing by LSU. Augustus for three. Line drive jumper. No, she had a toe on the line. It is a two-pointer, so the lead is cut back to six. But it is a desperation situation now for LSU. They cannot afford to let Baylor run the shot clock down. Simone Augustus doesn't really care where she is on the floor. You can see she never looks for the three-point shot. Eventually, she's going to have to start maybe giving herself that opportunity. Also, I've always contended that's the worst shot in the game. You back up six inches and it's worth 50% more. You have to be aware of where you are on the court. There's a lot of coaches that do teach that, and people have said a weakness that LSU has is that they don't have the three-point shot, but they haven't had to need it. Sophia Young, the All-American for Baylor, showed us tonight why she has been an All-American this year. Kodak, uh, Associated Press, you name it, she's on that team. Monkey Robertson said, you cannot teach speed. And you see how athletic she is. 
She did not get discouraged with a lot of shots that she was missing over Sylvia Fowles and her mom. You can see cheering Danny Christopher from the West Indies getting to see her daughter play in the NCAA tournament. She has just been brilliant, and I'm going to assume that's the West Indies flag. Probably not much of a reach. The lead is six with 126 to go. And here's full court pressure from LSU. Remember, there is no 10-second line in women's basketball. But has the pressure been too late? You think LSU might have started a little earlier on the right. press, I think, Mike, to disrupt the ball handlers of Baylor. Baylor right now milking the clock for everything that's worth. Wabara nearly lost his shot clock down to five. Neiman throws it away. A wasted trip for Baylor. Two threes could tie it. Johnson got inside the three-point line. Another mental error by LSU, even though the shot didn't go. And now Johnson with a hard foul reach around. She did go for the ball, though, so they're not going to call it an intentional foul. And that's four on Samika Johnson. Sylvia Fowles did a nice job off the steal. And it was good pressure by LSU. The only time in this game that we saw them put perimeter pressure on everybody against Baylor. Baylor really has had free reigns throughout this game to have passes inside. Whitaker needs to make one to make this a three possession ball game. And Kiana. Cheney is in for the first time. Two out of three from the line for Whitaker. And it is a three possession game and a big uphill climb for LSU with only 45 2 remaining on the clock. So we're down to a situation of score. Try to steal, and if you can't immediately foul, you simply can't afford to let them run their offense at all. The big thing for LSU how quickly they can bring the ball down and then also set up in an offense where they can get Keanu Chaney open or Simone Augustus for a shot out of the three-point situation. I think here is where having no backcourt in women's basketball is a tremendous advantage because it lets you use initially at least 85 feet of basketball court. Well, it does, but I don't think LSU really wants to do that. But if Baylor puts some pressure at the half court to make it difficult to bring the ball up the court, it's going to take time off the clock for LSU. 45.2 left. It is 64 to 57. Baylor on top. And Baylor, when they hold opponent, opponents under 60, 75 and 0. LSU needs a three to hit that 60 mark, and they're wasting an awful lot of time. They don't have. This is an awful possession for LSU, and that's not a smart foul by Scott. Cheney had brought the ball up the court, and Tamika Johnson wanted it, but as soon as Johnson got the ball, Mike, nothing was set up. Everybody was running around. There no were no picks, and as you said, too much time was off the clock. They just blew 14 seconds off the clock. They don't have 14 seconds. No. So Cheney at the free throw line, and she's the worst free throw shooter on the clock. Six out of 13. And Cole coming into the game. Absolutely. And now they have to foul, and they foul Neiman, who's a 75% shooter. And now the Baylor fans, with 24 seconds left, can taste it. We said coming into this game that anybody could win the Final Four. LSU, the number one team in the country for a long time, right. only two losses, where they lost to Rutgers by, two, by one, and then to Tennessee by in the two tournament. in the SEC tournament. And then they struggled, I think, with the first two games in the NCAA, NCAA. But this is a huge upset because Baylor, even though they've been playing well, a lot of people didn't expect them to win this game. Neiman hit two, 66 to 57.
great determination by the Lady Bears, putting the pressure on defensively against LSU, not giving them the opportunity to even get the ball once they cross half court to get a good look or to set it up or get the ball to Simone Augustus, who has not touched the ball in this last minute. Whitaker, who had struggled through the NCAA tournament and missed that free throw. Augustus with a long, long three. Baylor basketball. Baylor will advance to the NCAA championship game for the first time ever. They'll play the winner of our next semifinal. And what a comeback for Baylor. Down by 15 in the first half. And Ann, I thought they showed a lot of courage making that comeback. I totally agree with you, Mike. It looked like LSU was in control, but defensively, when Neiman came into the game, she knocked down some threes. Give Kim Mulkey Robertson credit going into that 3-2 zone. She loves to play man-to-man, -man, but she switched things up on LSU, made it difficult. I also thought that everybody made a contribution for the Lady Bears in this game. And you can see her consoling Tamika Johnson. She knows what it's like to be a point guard. Let's go to Doris Burke. Doris? Well, Mike, I've got a happy bunch with me. Kim Mulkey, many considered LSU the best team in the country. What allowed you to beat them? I thought our 3-2 zone was very effective, Doris. And, uh, wow, that's a good team we just beat. No question. Many, when they consider Baylor basketball, they talk about Sophia Young and Stephanie Blackman. But how did Wabara and Neiman impact this basketball game? It's been like that all year, Doris. We've had different players step up. We're not a two-dimensional team with Blackman and, and Sophia. And, uh, wow, we're playing for a national championship at Baylor University. Congratulations, Coach. Great job. Thank you. Mike Patrick. Doris, thank you so much. And a fantastic performance by the Lady Bears of Baylor and our Diet Coke player of the game, All-American Sophia Young, nearly had a triple-double, 21 points, 10 rebounds, six assists, and showed great leadership for the Baylor Lady Bears. And Baylor will now get a breather and a chance to watch Tennessee and Michigan State, and they'll start getting ready for Tuesday night's national championship game the first time they have ever had that privilege in the NCAA. Once again, the final score, 68-57 Baylor for Ann Myers, Mark Jones, Doris Burke, and our entire crew. Thanks for watching. This is Mike Patrick. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, and your exclusive home for the NCAA Women's Championship. Now to our studio and Reese Davis. Reese. All right.